Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Elhamdülillah. Salatu ve selamu ala Resulillah ve ala alihi ve sahbihi ve men ve lah. Another surprise inşallah. Our Imam Fahman and he's going to be our speaker. You know that brings back memories. 15 or 17 years ago when he used to come to school running to his class and his dad carrying his bag for him. That kind of angered me, told his dad he should carry the bag, not you. Then I see him downstairs 15, 16 years after that, and then he's waiting and he said, waiting, what are you doing here? I thought you finished school. He said, oh, I'm here to pick up my sister, you know, Zainab. And I said, that's your dad's job. He said, it's my job now. I said, subhanAllah. <coughs> the fruit of sincerity, how it produces. The fruits of M&M. Yeah, you know, this guy used to be an M&M freak. He would get 100 in every test to get some M&M. Even jumping jacks, just to stand in front of the class and do 10 jumping jacks. He brought his sister, like, almost daily basis. Sheikh Hassan, oh, I had a little sister. Sheikh Hassan, Zainab, Sheikh Hassan, Zainab. You are telling me you are not the only one who has a sister, inshallah. And now, inshallah, he's here. A graduate, a thinker, actually. <coughs> Working with inventions. A person whom Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave him an opportunity <coughs> with good pay, but because it's far away from his mom, he chose to come with something not even definite job to be closer to his mom. A person that when I spoke with made me think and made me benefit actually from the way he explained things and the way he thinks about things and how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala made him really think about everything he does. He reads the ayah. He takes it in its depth and comes up with jewels, to be honest with you. Something I mentioned this morning to you, and I want to relate it, but I could not relate it the way I want to relate it. And subhanAllah, he's talking about it, and when he broke it down, I said, guess what? That's exactly what I was looking for. <coughs> Allah. Something that makes him so amazed of how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says things in the Quran and does things in this life and how he created things so we can conclude and live our life in a better way and take it as a lead for us in everything in life so we can appreciate life and appreciate the creation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. I told Fahman, I said, Sheikh, I want you to tell the students what you told me in that perspective. He said, but what did you say, Sheikh? I said, I have to go help my mom. <laughs> but I have to go help my mom. I said, may Allah bless you and bless your mom. 10, 15 minutes, inshallah, you'll make it up for her. Help the school relate to the school, the school that raised you, and now, mashallah, you are in the raising process and the educational process of the school, from the school back into the school. This is our goal, inshallah, for the rest of you. Tfadl ya Shaykh. Fahman Khan. Bismillah wa salatu wa salam wa la rasulullah wa la alihi wa sahbihi ajma'i. Assalamu alaikum. So before I get started, a little bit note on the sister thing. Um, when I used to go to Islamic school when we were little, we used to see everyone uh, have older sisters. So we made dua for a sister, but we should have made dua for an older sister. Having a younger sister is different than having an older one, so. 
<clears throat> and I would come up to my mom like, she's nothing like I expected. Well, my mom said, you asked for a younger one, not an older one. So I don't know where she is, but she, she's good though. Uh, on the front of what Sheikh Hassan wanted to talk to me about, um, he actually said that he talked to you about two ayahs from the Quran. Uh, let me pull them up so this will be a test if you're paying attention. Does anyone remember the two ayahs, by the way? So, أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم ما لكم لا ترجون لله وقارا وقد خلقكم أتوارا. So in Surah An-Nur, Allah Subhanahu wa Taala says in the thirteenth and the fourteenth ayah, uh, what is the matter with you that you don't attribute to Allah greatness, and uh, while He has created you in stages. So I was actually talking to Brother Hassan about this, but can anyone before I I give sort of what I learned from it? Can anyone? connect those two things, why is, why is Allah great? Or, or the fact that Allah says that because I made you in stages, that makes me great. Can anyone relate that? And just think of us, think for a second about Allah's power. And how, you know, He can do everything, but despite that, He made you in stages, and then He says, that's the reason I'm great. You guys know how to speak, right? Uh, I, was, I was afraid of that. Please tell them. Okay, I'll tell you. So, we all know that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He is wahu ala kulli shayin qadir, that He can do anything without nothing. You know, if He says, kun fayakun, you know, it can be day and night, it can start raining, you know, <coughs> it can bring things into existence that weren't there. And that shows Allah's power, right? <coughs> Does everyone agree? Yeah. Right? Because we can't do from zero to nothing, right? We can't do nothing to something. So that shows Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's power even more. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's power even more is shown in the fact that even though He doesn't need these stages, He made stages. So the fact that the human being goes from a drop of water to flesh, to bones, to organs, then to a human being, is something that we can't come up with. You know, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He made a process for everything, and in that is His greatness. That He doesn't need it, but He makes it, and then you're like, how does that happen? Like, how do we go from water to human being? And you guys study biology, right? Like stages, here's what we go from here. Even like uh, down to the cell level, like how the cells are made and all that stuff. There's a process in everything, right? It doesn't become day and night overnight. Or same thing with the way plants grow. Like it's literally a rock that you put into the ground and from it comes like a huge tree, right? It doesn't come overnight. It happens in stages. And for Allah, He doesn't need that, but the fact that you see the plant comes out of the ground and it grows into a tree and it gives flowers and stuff, that shows Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's power even more. Does, any, does everyone get that? Right? And another example is on that side of the plants. If you look at it, when we dig into the ground, we have to use these heavy tools like shovels and sharp stuff to dig up, right? We can't do it with our hands. But that, you know how delicate plants are, right? That first seedling that comes up, that comes from under the ground without any shovel, without any any uh, any sharp thing coming out of it. It's so delicate, you know, if you pluck it off, it's gone, right? And that's what comes out of the ground. So that's, short of, that's sort of what shows, you know, Allah's power that, yes, He can make the plant go from zero to a tree, but the fact that He has a process for it, it shows His power even more. And I'll give you a, like a down-to-earth example. <coughs> when someone makes a dish for you, and it's really good. You appreciate the dish and you appreciate the cook, right? Right? You're like, oh, this is a good dish. I'm coming back to like eat from you again. But when, it's, when another person gives you the same dish and he tells you how he made it, like, oh, this is the secret ingredient I used. This is how long I put it in the oven. And this is my little trick on how I made it taste this way. So you appreciate the person even more and you appreciate the dish even more, right? Because now you know how they made it, right? For the, I don't know, the tech geeks out there. You know like uh, when you see, like when they show you how they make the iPhone, like they carve it out of aluminum? Who's seen those videos? Right? When they carve the iPhone out of aluminum and they show you how they make the holes in it and this is how they make it, that makes you like feel like, oh, that's so cool, right? Versus like if you just get it out of the box. So even in our own stuff, when we explain someone a process, they appreciate the thing that we made for them and they appreciate you even more. So that's just something that I... Sort of, I guess I want. I, I didn't plan on sharing it, but Brother Hassan told me I should share it with you. So, I hope you guys benefited from that. One last advice that I want to give all of you uh, is something that I've uh, learned personally, and that is that Allah Subhanahu wa Taala He's given each one of you a gift. 
Some, some of you are good at writing, some of you are good at art, some of you are good at engineering, you know, political science, history, whatever. You guys have a gift that I don't have and I have a gift that you guys don't have. So our job is to excel in this life and the akhirah th through that skill. And I'll give you an example from the Quran. Prophet Suleyman, you guys know him, right? So he's a king, he's a prophet, he has to govern everyone. He has to make sure that the land is taken care of, this is being taken care of. He has to make sure that, you know, if there's a court case going on between two people, he solves it fairly. I mean, he is doing beyond what anyone else is doing. And what does he ask Allah? He says, first of all, he asks Allah to forgive him. And then he says, Allah, give me a kingdom like, like no one has ever had. Like, give me a kingdom that's nobody's business but me. So what does that teach us? It teaches us that... Allah gave him a special gift which was governance with justice. Like, you don't find that, you know, together. <clears throat> Governing and justice. But Allah gave him that skill and he said, Ya Allah, give me more of this kingdom so I can do good. Because he knows that he can spread good in the land, he can teach people, he can make sure he judges fairly between people, and people in the land will benefit from him. So whenever you have a skill, ask Allah to give it to you even more and more and more with the intention that you want to do more and more and more good for yourself and for others. So things like you guys have your phones over here, you guys have your laptops and stuff, these are resources that Allah gave you. So your job is not to be in service of this, this should be in service of you. You do this, you use this to do good, right? So these are items that are in service of you and you're in service to Allah because of these. So that's how you should, and there's nothing wrong with having this stuff as long as you use it the right way, right? Don't get addicted, don't make, don't be a slave to it. Let it be in service to you and you do good out of it, and yes, you enjoy from it, and you go ahead and spread good. So that's my message to you, and Jazakallah khair and Salaamu Alaikum. Wa Alaikum as wa Rahmatullahi wa Barakatuh. Talha, on scale 1 to 10, what do you give her? 10. 10, MashaAllah. Fahman, I'll give you 9.5, ask me why. Subhanak Allahumma wa bihamdik ashhadu an la ilaha illa anta astaghfiruka wa atubu ilaik. slipped a little bit on subhanahu wa ta'ala, but we'll forgive you for that. Two things, the process that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave us in the creation, that's what I benefited from him. The word process. What does that do? It teaches you patience. It teaches you that it's not something that you wanted, it's there. It takes time. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, before he created you, Nine months he's fashioning you before you showed up to this world to show you that patience is needed in everything. SubhanAllah, the same thing the other day I was looking, I talked to my mom, which is the uh, mother-in-law. I was telling her, look how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make creates the baby, how much work they require. And he could have just made them adults and you don't need to do anything with them. That is something. Another thing, how you appreciate a thing when you have the stages and how it's made. You know, like where is Sena or, or, or her sister? Sena or uh, Sheikh? Where is, uh, you know, I, I received a, a gift, a jar, a jar of a jar. You know, if there was an ingredient process that comes with it, I would appreciate it more, right? Because at least I don't have to make it next time. Isn't that what, Fahman, you know what a jar is, right? Yes. Or oh, you live on it? Oh, not anymore. Not a <laughs> Wonderful thing. Uh, one more thing I was going to say, I forgot. <clears throat> uh, the last advice. Yeah, look at the example that he gave about Prophet Dawood And he related it to your phone. It's Dawood Suleiman, they're the same family, the same kingdom, the same ruling. How he related it to your iPhones. He wanted kingdom to serve Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And you got the phone to serve Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Don't be a slave to your phone and a slave to the technology when it's supposed to be one for you. Just like someone raising a dog, the dog is allowed for protection and for need. You end up protecting the dog and taking care of the dog and becoming a dog instead of taking advantage of that. 
Look at that relationship. Zakallahu Allah khayran fahma.